What's up, YouTube? Now it's with Team Fierce, so back with a video very different. So yeah, this is me. And today I'm going over the top 10 great units in Vanguard. So I want to start by prefacing this list by saying I limit my choices to one unit per clan. If I didn't, Aqua Force would take up most of the slots, which is very fun. I limit my choices based on usefulness of the unit on its own, as well as how prominent it has been in the clan. And also, there's no, in no particular order, so... Uh, first on our list is going to be Liberator of Oath Aglaval. Aglaval is pretty safe on Liberators, and all Liberated X run for it. If you're not, you should be running for it. On call, it's a uh, Counter Blast 1, check your top 3, grab a liber Liberator unit, and call it an open rearguard circle. It's a plus 1 and isn't Jetbreak restricted, so he can be used in the early game and allows early game advantage, which is really good since you're grade 2s, that's what you want them to do. You want them to generate advantage for you. Um, next on their list is Blasted Dark Avenger Abyss. On call, if you have Avenger Vanguard, you counter blast one, kill the opposing grade one or lower rear guard, and that's pretty much it. Um, he's actually really, really good though because he kills most back row units. The only annoying boosters or annoying starters for that matter, you can just kill them off pretty fast. Um, you can kill off Wingle Brave, you can kill off Judge Bow. Those are probably the two most prominent ones right now at the moment. And also, he's the mate for Phantom Blaster Abyss, who's pretty dominant right now because he's. Usually, for most Avenger builds, you're going to see 4 Phantom Blaster Abyss and like 4 Raging Form. So, he's also really necessary, and I mean, he has a restand skill, so there's that too. Um, and on to number 3, we have Nurse of Broken Heart. So, a lot of people might not believe me on this one, but trust me, Nurse of Broken Heart is what made Angel Feather even remotely good. Since without Broken Heart, you can live for a sloop, but you're not really. By live for a slooping, you're not really accomplishing anything. I mean, like, yeah, you're, you unflip, but it's not that great. Um, she is gem break one restricted which kind of sucks but I mean even then she's still a very very powerful unit. Also she um, the fact that like she exists that makes no CL chaining and all that even more crazy since it powers up your guard. And also oh and your vanguard too. Um, but also not only that she allows battle keeping no CL to be even better since if you have a no seal vanguard and like you salmon swap with battle keeping no seal, that's where you plus 4k to your vanguard, making you 15k, which most decks are gonna have a hard time hitting for magic numbers on that one. I mean, yeah, same as 10k, but it's it's still you're an extra shade up, or you can actually be 16k, even better. But yeah, most of the time it it makes it very difficult. Um, I've just straight up even one games too, off me getting so many damage swaps and broken heart. But yeah, broken heart is too important to the deck. For the most part, um, most Angel Feather decks actually cry pretty bad if you can kill off their Broken Hearts. Number 4, we have Frozen Ogle. This is another Legion Mate unit, um, and it's actually really, really strong. So, this unit is a beast. Um, on the turn you Legion, after it attacks, you kind of off one and put it in soul and you grab any unit from your deck. Which is insane, because you can grab itself. And if you break Ride Legion, that's 24k total power from it. And you can loop into severals, it's nuts the amount this unit can do. It's really your opponents at 5 damage, they're gonna have to drop a ton. This unit is just so good, it's definitely one of the main reasons why Spike Brothers is just... It's still a pretty deadly deck, it's not meta, but it's definitely still a pretty deadly force. I mean, if your opponent goes in on you when it's when you're at a even 4 damage, with this unit, they can easily kill you. Oh my gosh, it's insane. Next up is number 5, History Maker Dragon. This unit is interesting because in release times, I guess would be the way to put it, it sort of fits in with things like uh, Twilight Arrow Dragon, Peril, and things like that. Except, Greer Chronic already had one, so they made this unit out require boost. When it just attacks a Vanguard no matter what. A gem Break 1, yeah, but you can counter boss 1 and Time Leap one of your own units, which is really good. It lets your cards continue to attack your opponent. And like Spike Brothers, if you keep attacking them, they're, they're going to drop a bunch of cards, and that's definitely, definitely not good for your opponent. <laughs> it's definitely a huge key unit, and definitely when uh, Chrono Jet, type, Chrono Jet uh, definitely uses it a lot, and when Chrono Tiger comes out, it's going to even be seen in playing there. And then we have number 6, Photon. <laughs> Photon's another very, very good unit. Photon on call, you have a Star Vader Vanguard, and your opponent's lock card, you just lock any card. It's not no counter blast, no soul blast, no oh you can only lock back row. It's not you just you can lock anything. You can lock a front row. You can lock a back row. For the most part, you're gonna lock a front row. But I mean, you can lock a back row if your opponent already has the front row unit locked. You can lock the vanguard booster. It's so good. It lets 
Chaos Breaker would be a lot better. It was staple. It's staple in every Star Raider build. There's no Star Raider build that doesn't run for Photon if they have access to for Photon. It's just too good. Then we have Sarko Blaze. Um, Sarko Blaze is another good unit. Sarko Blaze, when it attacks, if um, you retire a unit and it becomes engorged, it gets a Silent Tom effect. Except Silent Tom is 8k, Sarko Blaze is 9k. So you can have a 7k booster making 16, uh, 16k column, meaning your opponent can't just drop that one trigger. Nah, they, they gotta drop two cards, so they have to lose two cards in their hands. And also, you can just stack triggers on it, and it, it hits your magic numbers pretty easily, as opposed to something like Silent Tom, where you have to run either Gemini, or you can run the 9k Magus, I guess, but it's still just a really, really strong unit. And the Retire isn't even bad, because it's a Tachi Kaze unit, I mean, they're just gonna get it back anyway. Uh, then we have uh, number 8, Slash Shade. Slash Shade is an interesting unit, it has a great effect in the drop zone, since he takes full advantage of the Grand Blue Hollow, Hollow ability. Normally when you call a unit um, and you put in Hollow, you're losing that unit at the end of your turn. As well as cards such as Nightmiss and Plague of Ten, their units also die at the end of the turn. However, Slash A can turn those temporary plus ones into permanent plus ones. As he comes back when your Vanguard attacks, and he also comes back as his 11k attacker. So he can hit pretty much anything aside from the occasional Brawler cross ride. Not only that, he comes back pre-drive check. So let's say you attack with your units and then you attack with the Vanguard and they perfect guardied. You can still put all the triggers on your uh, slash shade. Not only that, he's not even once per turn, so you can use two slash shades in a turn if you want. This unit lets Grand Blue extend the amount of attack they have in a turn. It's just too great. Every Grand Blue deck, has, every Grand Blue Seven Seas deck has to run this card. It's amazing. Next, we have our number nine. Um, this is gonna be an odd choice probably for some people, but Ideal made in Thurium. Now, the reason why I picked Thuria uh, for the Neo Nectar unit uh, over something like say Green Shot Elf is while yes green shadow does have explosive plays and yes made in flower screen is very similar and that you know it copies the name but here's the thing green shadow also has a grade one unit that's very similar called katarina and both of these units have one key thing which is their effects activate when you have the same name is called to the field made in flower screen copies names once it's already on the field theria however becomes whatever you want whatever you want it in the awkward sort of like, I'm calling it, but it's not officially on the field yet place. And not only that, you can turn 3 to your hand at the beginning of your main phase, if you wish, during the next turn, to trigger a green shot off and Katarina again. Flower Screen can't do any of those. Thuria is mainly on this list for the fact that it has a lot of versatility, and it's pretty much whatever you want, whenever you want. And before I at least reveal the last unit, I'll give out, you know, the honorable mentions. Dragonic Burnout, because your tiny units without a kind of last is pretty great. Grand Tiger, because it lets you move card advantage from your field to your hand pretty easily. Silent Tom, because Guard Restrict is amazing, but Silent Tom is only 8k. Sweet Cocktail, because this unit actually is really, really low-key good. Either your opponent minuses to call over the unit you paralyzed, or you save 10k shields from guarding, and you get a free card during the end phase. And lastly, Magnum Assault, because it's a weird guard can like re-stand, and you can stack triggers on him. And for the last unit, this should be no surprise to anyone, Tidal Assault. Tidal Assault, without question, the best Aqua Force Grade 2, and probably the best Grade 2 in the game. It can restand after attacking a Vanguard once, and while yes, it does lose 5k power, it's not gem break restricted, and it costs nothing. It makes Aqua Force one of the best decks to go first in, since if you open with the option to call Tidal Assault while you're at Grade 2, you can easily push your opponent for fast damage, and it's also an ideal target for something like Bubble or Draco Kid. Not only that, but if you powered up with Lambros or Thalvas, which is also a pretty common thing that can happen, it becomes an even more deadly unit. Tidal Assault is stable in every Aqua Force deck due to the possibilities in Kameen. So that's going to do it for my list. Were there any cards you disagree with? Did you enjoy the new style I'm doing? Listen, leave that in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Natsu slash QBF Team Fairy Tale, signing out.